And we're back with more of the Pokemon film. Yay! It's like a new skin working itself into place. Infinity Pool. Yeah. Set in a fictional country. Fictional country. Uh, uh, okay, let's do this. It's time, buddy! It's time! God help us, it's time. Yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film Podcast to shimmy, shimmy, ya, shimmy, ya, shimmy, yay our way into the third and final half of the podcast. And it is said third half wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our handcrafted, hand-painted, and hand-jobbed in the forest while taking a pee movie of the week. And this week, oh, look, David Cronenberg's son is a filmmaker. Uh, How cute. This is a Nepo film. Yes. The Nepo baby film. That's what everybody's saying. Nepo baby. This is a Nepo baby film, huh? Explain that to me. Nepo baby? There are so many friggin' Nepo babies. So many uh, famous people in Hollywood and then directors and then executives and then all of these people. They got their jobs not because they were talented, but because, oh, their father is this, their this is that. The person who wrote and directed this film is legendary director David Cronenberg's son. So he's a nepotism baby. Nep this is a, yeah, um, nepo babies. Nepo babies are a big thing. Okay, see, I guess I just needed you to explain what the nepo Yeah, there's a big uh, debate about it. There, An article came out in the newspaper about, like, Nepo babies that you knew about and ones that you didn't, and here are all the famous ones and and all of that sort of stuff. Like a uh, comedian Nick Kroll is like a millionaire and doesn't need to act, and he's always just he got the Nick Kroll show and got all of his parts because like oh his parents are rich and famous, and it's like you probably don't know that you probably don't know that this famous person is the daughter of this person and that this person oh. was born from. Executives, there's a whole list. Yeah, she's a Nepo baby. Yeah. A few people are like, yeah, I'm a proud Nepo baby, but most of the people are like, no, I got this job because of hard work and, and a small loan of $4 million. You know, that sort of a thing. So, yeah. Oh, what a surprise. David Cronenberg has a son, and his son is, his son's films are just as, uh, Fun but pretentious as uh, his daddy's. It's yes. time for us to discuss the 2023 film Infinity Pool. And like I said, I I wanted to like this movie. Going it's into it, concept. I wanted to like it. Oh, it's a shit concept. I like the concept. I just don't like how they did the concept. What did you like about the concept that rich people are assholes? We know that. I like the I, idea of. I like the idea of. This is like just expounding science. on what Monty Python did years ago. I like the it's idea of. It's an expansion of, like of a, the twit race. I like the idea of a science fiction film where, hey, you did something bad and the punishment is death, but if you pay us, we can build a clone and uh, the clone will be killed and then you can go about living your life. And like, um, that's, a, that's a decent, interesting concept, but it, it... Bunny, I apologize for this week's movie. <laughs> um, I heard reviews that oh, this was so scary and this is so effed up, and Mia Goth is in it, and I freaking love her now. She was amazing in X and Pearl last year, so I figured that this movie would be pretty messed up fun. But instead, it just it feels like this film is trying to say something, but it just exactly it isn't. doesn't know what it wants to say. I kept thinking of uh, Max Castanella in Ed Wood. What does ostentatious mean? It, that's what I kept thinking. Yeah. Woman in white, floating above the dunes. Maybe it's just fatigue or 
Maybe it's the indignities of war, or maybe it's something else. But this feels like just a different version of Crimes of the Future, the second one. Yeah. It, also, if you don't know what Crimes of the Future is, check out episode 440, so like 10 episodes ago. And also episode uh, 409, because David Cronenberg made two different films called the same thing. Yes. Having and Francis nothing Ford Coppola's next film is going to be called The Godfather Part 3, but it's going to be about a gnome. Yes. And his magical adventure in the world of make-believe. Like, F off! Buddy, what are your thoughts? Hit me. Uh, it was really pretty vacuous. Uh, it was pretentious as hell. It was acting like it was trying to say something and it really wasn't conveying whatever the fuck it was trying to con convey. There were a lot of just scenes that were just filler. You know, yeah. like let's show a dog for a little while, you know? Yeah. Th things like that, 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 you, okay, you're just padding this out. And yeah. what the fuck was up with that whole sex scene thing? You know, like, uh, okay, you're going to have a sec an orgy scene, but you're not going to show us the orgy scene. Originally, like, I, like see, I did this when I was twelve, trying to get in sc scrambled channels on cable. I don't fucking yeah. need it here. See, that might be something in editing because originally this film got an NC seventeen, and so David Cronenberg toned it way down in order to get the R. So, yeah, the the film might have gone farther originally. There is an unrated version out there. I don't know where it is, and I don't care. Because the film's already like an hour and one minute. I don't need to see a longer version. Oh, good like, God. No, no, no. Like, like the Western Heaven's Gate. And the movie came out, and the movie was a bomb. But now people are like, oh, it's good. See, the problem is, is that you didn't see the four and a half hour version. Yeah. And it's like, no, I'm... I'm I'm good. I'm good. Like some people say that the that the four hour long water world is is genius. And I'm just gonna take your word on that. And uh just move on. I don't need to watch the longer version. I mean, all of these characters from top to bottom were shit. They're all horrible. And 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 some of the things that you were going, they were some of the things where they were trying to get some kind of emotion or trying to elicit some kind of reaction just kind of fell dead. Okay. You were totally prepared to beat this man to death until you found out it was one of your clones. And yeah. somehow that mattered, and what? Are you a good person now? What the fuck? There, there were so many clones in this that I expected David Bowie to show up as Nikolai Tesla. Yeah, and like, why do you need three of the same jar? You know, I mean... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I could see if one of them had like a, a painting of Bugs Bunny on it, and another one had, like, the Tasmanian Devil painted on it. And, you know, you would get it for $1.99 if you bought the full Whopper meal. Yeah. like to take this time to show you a little bit of my uh, glassware collection. This is, um, uh, there you go, Two-Face from Batman Forever. I use it to keep the pencils and pens that do work. And then behind that is uh, Mickey Mouse from uh, Disney's uh, Millennium Celebration in the year 2000. I use this for the pens that don't work. Um, my glue and lighters 
are uh, held in this Welch's jar that says Muppets in space, which isn't a thing. The movie that came out was Muppet, Muppets, Muppets in space, Muppets from space. There's a difference, but anyway, this is a collector's item. I also have a Garfield one that that I think uh, Mal stole from me. That's okay. The one with the lead in. That's the one with the lead in it. Yeah, that's the that's the lead paint one. But yeah, um, I don't remember where we were going with this, and I'm very tired. But I I will say though, I have a huge crush on Mia Goth. The blonde crazy chick in this, I love her. Her character, oh, she plays a horrible, horrible woman, but she plays it wonderful. She plays she she's she's just crazy and insane, and I love her in this. She is the only thing that I can say that I really like about this film. Yeah, she does a great performance, and I love her. But okay, so Infinity Pool, twenty twenty three film. It came out at the end of January, so this is a recent film. Um, I think it's still playing in some theaters. Uh, it's directed by David Cronenberg's son, Brandon. This movie is his third full-length feature film. He did a bunch of shorts. He did a bunch of music videos. And then his first full-length film was 2012's Antiviral, which is not... It, which sounds like it's in the same universe as... 2025, the world plagued by a virus, but um, it's not. Yeah. Antiviral is a horror sci-fi movie about a future where celebrities sell designer illnesses. It stinks of Daddy Cronenberg. Yes. It 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 just does. His second film was a lot more successful. That was 2020's Possessor, which is a horror sci-fi movie about an organization that uses brain implants to take over people's minds and then gets these normal people to assassinate people for the rich elite, which again stinks of Crone and Papa. But Possessor gets extra points because for having Jennifer Jason Lee in it. Remember when she was in everything? Yes, yes. She was everywhere in everything, and you didn't mind because she was always freaking great. She was awesome in everything. So, um, Possessor, it's more Crone and Papa, but Jennifer Jason Lee's in I, I love her, and it, it's a shame that she's not in everything like she used to be, but, um... And isn't she in Nepo Baby too? Yeah. Yeah. I, isn't she like related to Jamie Lee Curtis somehow? I just at this I think so. At this point I just assume that 75% of all of Hollywood are Nepo babies in some way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so yeah, more crone and dad sounding stuff. And now with his third film, Infinity Pool, writer-director Brandon Cronenberg finally cements himself as Diet David Cronenberg. Okay. Right? Yeah. Right? This just looks like cut from the same cloth, you know? I got this hat. Uh, this is visual. So if you're listening to this on SoundCloud or Apple Podcasts or whatever, you should try tuning into our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Pope on Film, uh, because every once in a while we'll do visual stuff. Uh, I bought a hat at, uh, I don't even remember where, it might be TJ Maxx, but I bought it for $10 and I just decided I'm going to be a hat lady now. <laughs> okay. Uh, at first I was worried that it would give off uh, Johnny Depp vibes, but now I'm trying to go for a Stevie Nicks. Okay. But uh, that is a straight up fedora. It's it's a huge lady hat. It's a big one. From the San Diego Hat Company. And I love it. <laughs> I'm, a, I, I'm a hat lady now. This movie just feels like a different sort of crimes of the future it feels like gratuity for the sake of gratuity 
Um, I would say, Bonnie, why don't you explain the plot? But I already explained it. It's a fictional foreign country. Yeah, horrible people being horrible. That's as close it's as a, we get. It's a fictional foreign country. A uh, couple is is at uh is on vacation and someone gets run over uh hereditary party of four and yeah. hit and run i know what you did last summer and they're going to be killed but for the rich elites if you pay a crap ton of money they'll make a clone of you and the clone will be killed and you can just go off with your life but here's a collector souvenir of your ashes and uh, so the rich elite can basically do whatever they want on this in this country and just pay to get out of it. And I'm assuming that the direct that day that a uh, brand let's go Brandon Cronenberg was trying to say something important about uh, eat the rich and the elites and yada, yada, yada. But it just seems like gratuity for the sake of gratuity. And. And I'm confused about the legality which, which of all is okay, of this. Which is okay, which is okay, and you can do that, but you still need to juxtapose that up against something. And and Skarsgård was just as scummy as everybody else. So yeah, it's what, so what were you holding a light to, or anything, you know? You need some kind of a contrast here. Yeah. I'm confused about the legality of it. So aren't you technically faking your death when you get back to America? Are you allowed to still be yourself because yourself died in the other country? Do you go by a different name now? Everyone, you know, finally like, oh, hey, it's time to go back to America. I have to do this and I have to do this. I have all these plans and here's all the things that I'm going to be doing. And it's like, but legally you died. I'm confused about the legality of it. Now I would like to know more information, but yeah, um, the whole thing's purposefully vague. Are you allowed to be yourself? I, I don't know. I'm interested in that. And what the but... fuck was up with Knife Boy? Knife Boy? Yeah. Oh, yes! A uh, Stabby Kid. Yes, yeah. I wrote that down. He looks like the son from Hook. Slash Dick Tracy's ward. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god, did they somehow get this one freaking kid from all those movies in the 80s and made him not age? Because that looks 100% like the kid from Dick Tracy. I just ate 10 pounds of ice cream. When do we eat? You know? I, yeah. I, I was shocked. He was a dead ringer for that kid. And why wasn't that kid in Jurassic Park? Now that I think about it. I didn't write this down. But that was round about that time. Yeah, I would have much preferred the kid from Dick Tracy than the kid that we got in Jurassic Park. I bet he auditioned. He was around that age. I don't know. Anyway. Again, let me go back to the one positive. Mia freaking Goth is phenomenal in this. She played Sarah in 2018's Suspiria remake, which... Uh, Turned out to not be that bad. And then, wow, in 2022, she exploded. She was two parts in X, which is just the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but with porn. It's much better than it needs to be. It's really good. It's really fun, really funny. And Mia Goth plays like a young runaway who is a stripper and is hoping to make money as a porn actress and wants to be the biggest star in the world. And it took me a while to realize, wait a second, the young star of the film is also the murderous 90 something year old woman. Holy crap. Who is this actress who was a 20 year old and a 90 year old in the same movie? Because there's a scene where the 90-something-year-old woman 
assaults the like 20 year old woman yeah. and i had no clue it was the same person it is a phenomenal acting job and i was blown away by mia goth starring in the movie x and then what a treat a prequel came out a mere six months later also starring mia goth and that prequel was called pearl and that's even better than x so much fun and after that uh i am forever in love with mia goth i don't want to say she can do no wrong because my wife said during the break that i should stop saying that about people because once you say about a celebrity that celebrity can do nothing wrong suddenly they start spouting nazi crap and i'm yeah. not saying that mia goth is a nazi i'm just saying i'm covering my bases she can't do nothing wrong she is I have a, really really blonde though yeah i have a huge crush on her she is uh she is to me in 2022 and 2023 what Florence Pugh was for me in 2019. Yeah. That like, ooh, look at you. I'm you're pretty. I like you. And she is straight up creepy, freaky, scary in this, and I love her. But this movie has Mia Goth and very little else. Yes. Uh this movie is pretentious. It reeks of, oh, look at my film. It's not horror. It is an art film and a statement on class and greed. And when I was writing it, I remember what a famous German philosopher once said when he said, blah, 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 pretentious. Yes. This is a pretentious film. Um, it's, it's just a... a Crazy, gory, bizarre. It reminded me a little bit of Funny People. You ever see Funny People? That movie with two killers, and sometimes they'll, funny they'll look right at the camera and talk to you. Yeah, Funny Games, wasn't it? Funny Games. That's okay. it. Funny Games. Yeah. It reminded me a little bit of Because I think it was a Funny and... People, too. Yeah. Yeah. But it reminded me of that movie in that here are just all these horrible people doing horrible things and getting away with it. Uh, it's, this is like a, like a film that 19 year old me would have liked back when I was like, Oh, look at me. I like film. I'm taking film classes. I'm studying film. Oh, what? There's a indie low budget art film. That's only playing in one theater across town. I'm going to go with that with all of my movie theater friends and we're gonna go watch it and we're gonna love it because we love art films because we're young we're 19 and we're gonna smoke cloves outside of the theater and talk about how we're smarter than everybody else 19 year old me would have freaking loved infinity pool <laughs> uh but this movie is shallow is a shallow and thinks it's too important i'm in my 40s and i have less patience for ostentatious pretentious arty party shit yeah also i'm just gonna come out and say it i'm there's like four or five scars guards mm -hmm. i know that the dad was in thor yes and i think f somebody in that in that one porn movie nymphomania there it was like a part two or part three they made it, it was way too long but yeah uh um so i know him i could not tell you who the other ones are i don't know all i know is that this one didn't look like pennywise yes that's like the best I could oh, say. Oh, but the Pennywise one, he was in Barbarian. Have you seen Barbarian? That was a lot of fun. No. I don't it's, know if I've it's, heard of it. It's a horror movie about two people who accidentally get double booked into like an Airbnb. And it goes left field quick. And it's a dumb, fun horror movie. And right when it gets scary, it turns into a comedy. With uh, the song Ricky Ticky Tavi by 
Donovan. Yeah. Oh, I it, like your hat. Huh? I like your hat. Thank you. I'm a hat lady now, I decided. Yeah. And I love it. I'm going for a Stevie Nick sort of a thing. Yay. Yeah. If, you, if I ever see the Seven Wonders, I'll make a path to the Rainbow's Edge. Okay. That's what I'm going for. Bonnie, do me a favor. Do you have your do you have like a browser up? Uh yeah. Bing or Google Brandon Cronenberg. I want you to look at his face. Okay? Uh -oh. Uh oh. Okay, tell me when you've got his face. This is totally worth it, by the way. 100% worth it. Brandon Cronenberg. It, you're going to love this. Oh, my. Okay. Brandon Cronenberg looks like if Peter Stormari had a baby with Borat. Yes. I never thought I'd say this. He has resting Borat face. <laughs> it is phenomenal. I didn't know that was a thing. Apparently it is. I think it's kind of funny that someone got Peter Stormari specifically Big Lebowski, we believe in nothing. Yes. Stormari. Yes. And got, and got Borat and made them into a Cronenberg monster. And that's David Cronenberg's son. It all makes sense. He, I feel is, like I should have like a bunch of pictures on a on a board behind me with a bunch yeah. of string, and I'm like Pepe Silvia, Pepe Silvia. It makes sense. Uh, in my head. what I'm seeing here, my impression is he looks like a mime who despises mime. Yeah, he's got a shakes the clown vibe to him. Yeah, he looks like he would be a kids performer, but a kids performer in Death to Smoochie. Yeah. Yeah. His, his face just looks like it Lord. needs white makeup. Yeah. Lord. Yeah. And then I learned that uh, David Cronenberg wrote Infinity Pool after having a very bad experience at a resort. And that makes me think, okay, so not only are you a Nepo baby, but it sounds like you're a bit of a Karen. Yeah. I Ooh. had... I had the worst service at this resort. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to write a movie about how all uh, foreign resorts are horrible. Hey, I'm just thinking, who'd you run over? <laughs> Get the security footage. We need we need to start reviewing that right now. Uh, hey. Ten minute warning. <laughs> okay. Infinity pool, kind of effed up, pretentious attack on rich people. It's an artistic horror film. Someone saw Hostel and said, what if we put the purge and the prestige in with that? Yeah. Mix it up real good. That's Infinity Pool. Um, you, you get Hostel, you add the purge to it, and you get a movie that likes to smell its own farts. Yeah, but, but like this wasn't even horror. It was just boring yeah the only part that i found even remotely scary is when stabby kid came back oh shit that's stabby kid yeah. oh it doesn't matter this is all a dream or friggin whatever it doesn't even matter so one thing i do another thing i do like well exactly about this exactly and i'm sorry i think you've just hit on the tagline for this movie what it it doesn't really matter yeah, it doesn't really matter. Um, I do like the morals, the mor the and the moral of the story is because this movie, as far as I can tell, has three morals. Number one, rich people are a holes. Okay, that I can agree with. Uh, number two, um, what's the second one? Oh, don't marry a writer. 
If there's yeah. one thing that I have learned from my wife's uh, years-long obsession with Supernatural, it's that writers lie. Yeah. Don't marry a writer. Hey. <laughs> and also, if you marry a writer, there's a one in six chance they'll stab you in the stomach. Yeah, this is true. Just look at just look at normal mailman Norman Mailer. And the third and final um, moral of this story, and uh, I can't um, stress this enough. I watch a lot of travel videos of people going to like island resorts and stuff like that on YouTube. Um, if you're staying at a resort in a foreign country, any foreign country, don't leave the resort. Yeah. Ever. Even if Mia Goth promises to give you a wraparound, not worth it. <laughs> a, 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 a reach around, a wraparound. <clears throat> it's not worth it. Even from Mia Goth. It's not worth it. And One we and we, I, and since you brought that up, we literally saw every fluid possible come yeah. out of that man. Yep. Yep. Vomit. Splooge. That'd be a good name for a metal band. Splooge. Vomit splooge. Yeah, vomit splooge. Spooge does after peeing. Yeah, that's gotta that's gotta do uh uh that's gotta wreak havoc on your urinary tract. That's how you get a UTI, people. I yeah. hope the resort has some cranberry juice. Um in its opening week, Infinity Pool made more money than Crimes of the Future made in its entire theatrical run, so suck it, Papa Cronenberg. You know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see an artist, someone with more artistic talent than me, draw director David Cronenberg as a Cronenbergian monster. It would be a Cronenberg Cronenberg. Ah, uh, uh-huh. One thing that I like about this film is that, so the entire film is just two hours of Mia Goth torturing a Skarsgård. And she's like, I think you're horrible. And he's like, I don't care. We actually don't like you at all. Okay. We've been torturing you this entire time because we're rich and we think it's fun. Okay. Yeah. You're a horrible person and your uh, girlfriend just it, it broke up with you and you're a piece of crap. And we've given you drugs and we've made you had a like a bisexual orgy and we've made you kill people. Oh, I don't care. But the thing that that finally like stabs him in the heart. Yeah. Oh, and also, I didn't read your book. What? <laughs> That's the thing that gets him. Like he's just walking there in a stupor. I didn't even read your book, and that's when. Oh. You. In you fact, I've got bitch. a bad review of your book right here. That's the thing that gets him. And I love that bad book review because it also doubles as a review of this movie, overcompensating with pretentiousness. <laughs> that is this. Uh, uh, so that's this movie. Critics were all like, I said this earlier, critics were all like, oh, what a great movie. Brandon is nothing like his daddy, but what movie did you all see? Because yeah. this seems like um, uh, over the top gore yeah uh runs in the family i so. I, I the the oh like see you tell me brandon cronenberg has made a movie the only thing that stops this movie from being exactly what i expect expected is i expected it to be good <laughs> the, and also this is one of those movies where i'm watching and i'm just going Damn it. Jeannie's probably watching this. I was. <laughs> like, every once in a while, we'll do a movie that's, like, so weird that I'm like, freaking Jeannie. We, we, sorry. Just say sorry right now. Sorry. I'm sorry, Jeannie. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I apologize. That was pure shit. Yeah. Yeah. 
you know. So, so that's it for Infinity Pool. Next episode, next week, have I got a freaking idea. Okay. And I'm so excited for this. Um, so, my birthday is coming up. I look, I, I am turning older than you'd think. Uh, older, older than I look, I'd like to say. You know how they say black don't crack? Yeah. Well, I came up with one. Brown slows down. Oh, okay. Every, every once in a while when I feel bad, I'll just get on Facebook and uh, search all of the people I went to elementary school with and see them bald and them like m morbidly obese and, and just hating their lives. And then I look at me looking like I'm in my 30s. So, uh, it, my birthday is coming up. It's on March 22nd. And I want to watch something fun, something that I love, something that means something personal to me, and something that will allow me to talk uh, about myself and about what the movie means to me. And also, not something that will cause a freaking engram like this week's movie, Infinity Poop. So, Next episode, my birthday episode, we are watching Ed Wood's Glen or Glenda. Oh, okay. But hear me out. Okay. Hear me out. Hear me out. There's a twist. We already did this episode 199. That was forever ago. This is episode 250 for, for, for cripe's sake. We did it in episode 199. But here's the thing. Yeah. Oh, sorry, 450. 450. Thank you. Thank you. This is episode 450, and we did it in episode 199. But I was a dude back then. Okay. I am a woman now, a trans woman, and this is a pretty big trans movie that meant a lot to me when I was a man. And now I will be looking at it from a fresh trans perspective. And it will uh, be a conversation starter, and I'm excited about that. Excited to take a fresh look at Ed Wood's most personal film, Glen or Glenda. So that is next episode. Be sure and join us. But now that I'm looking back at this episode, uh, the ins, the outs, a normal mailman, a fuba. this has been a pretty good episode. This has been... You are torturing me less than a, a minute. damn I'm good saying. episode. Okay, thank you. I felt the same way, but I didn't want to step on your toes because you're the person who makes that distinction. <laughs> and I, I, you know, but I concur with your assessment, good sir. <laughs> so until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am uh, Reverend May Lynn. And on behalf of Natasha and Eleanor and everybody else, I just want to say thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you just off of... Yeah. <laughs>